sorry, I'm never too loud. Welcome everyone to our high school planning night. Um, most of you should have two handouts, our course selection booklet, which is pink, and then a yellow course selection sheet. We have a couple um, up here. If you want to wave, we can come around and hand them out to you. Um, and then there's additional ones by the door as well when you are coming in. So I don't think we'll be too long this evening, but our agenda is up here on the board. Um, so we'll just do some introductions first. My name's Amy Gavazzi. I'm one of the middle school counselors. Most of you know me by now. Um, we also have Mrs. Martin here, our other middle school counselor. Hello. And then our high school counselors, Mr. Romans and Mrs. Davis. Um, and then all our administrators are here too. Mrs. Troutman, Mrs. Paul Hamas, Mr. Paschke. I'm not sure if I saw Mr. Lauer here or not. Oh, he is over at the game. So he is here, but not in the building. Do we have any more of our high school staff or teachers here with us tonight? All right, here we go. High school English teacher, Mr. Serbeck. Um, and we might have some more people coming in just because we have so much going on this evening. Um, so that's it for introductions. Um, but we're going to talk a little about the upcoming transition activities we'll have for our 8th graders as they get ready to ha for high school. This is just our first event, our kickoff, and then we'll have a lot more time that we'll spend with your students coming up. Um, we'll also talk about graduation requirements and diploma types, um, and planning for the future, creating a flexible four-year plan, um, our course selection sheet, which you're holding, um, P-TECH and other high school opportunities, and then we'll have some time for questions to the whole group, and then we'll also be around after for a couple minutes if you have more um, specific questions for your student. All right, so as we're talking about our transition process, again, this is kind of our kickoff here tonight. Um, for some students who have already had eighth grade success skills, um, this year, too, I've come in and talked a little bit about what high school might look like. And, and, the, and those of you that have, will have success skills in the coming quarters will also come in and just talk a little bit more about that and share some information with you. Um, and then our high school counselors and um, Mrs. Martin and I will be pushing into classes um, and working through the course selection sheets with your students as a whole group. Um, and then we will also be sitting down with them individually and kind of looking at their courses they're choosing um, individually after you've had some time to chat about that with them as well. Um, we will also have a panel discussion that they'll come to um, in mid-February with some high school students and some high school teachers. They'll be able to get a lot of questions answered about high school in general. Um, and then in the spring, we will also have a high school visit where the kids will be able to come up and really see all the fun things that the high school has to offer and work with some high school students through that. That's always a lot of fun for our students. And then um, over the summer, we will have um, schedules available on the portal. And then right before school starts, um, students will have time to actually have an orientation and come in and try their locks, um, walk through their schedules, meet their teachers, um, and then again, talk about more um, opportunities for extracurriculars that we have at the high school too. All right, so if we're kind of jumping in, um, up here on the board we have some of our high school um, course courses that are offered, but I'm actually going to click it to the next slide if you'd like, Mrs. Okay. Martin, okay. and then you could talk a little bit yeah. about that. I feel like this is a little more user-friendly version. <laughs> yeah, this one's a little confusing. Um, I guess one thing just to kind of point out before we click on to the next one, there are lots of different things to look for and not to throw too much at you at once and overwhelm you, but um, what we're going to focus on in the next slide is really just the left part. All the stuff on the right part, that's why we have these wonderful people here, they will be able to help your students with that, figure out what kind of diploma they're, they're going for, um, if they're going to get any special endorsements like honors. So that's something that they will work very closely with your student for, and I, I don't want you to worry too much about that. It's, it's a lot to, to take in. So we're going to really focus on this. What we're going to have each student do is they're going to graduate, and we need them to have at least 22 credits when they graduate. So a student earns a credit by 
taking a course, completing it, and their overall average, their final average, has to be passing. If they don't pass that course, they will have to take it over again. Okay? And the state does have us taking you know, certain classes for each subject. So for English, they will have to take four classes, so four units. Social studies is the same, four units. Mathematics, three. That can, that can kind of look different. Honestly, we have a bunch of different math courses that students can take. They can take algebra over a two-year sequence. So it really just depends on how your student is going to do in math. If, if it's their strong suit, maybe they don't need that. Maybe they can do it in a year. Um, science, they do need three units. So one has to be life science, one has to be physical science. Then we move on to a second language, so we offer French and Spanish, okay? And then a lot of the kids will come up already with that one credit because they took it in seventh and eighth grade. So if your student really likes their, their language that they're taking, they can continue that on and they can take that. And Mrs. Gavazzi will kind of talk about that in one of the next slides, but if you're going for um, a different regions, not we're just talking about main regions here, um, then you'll have to get into that second language and take three credits. So art and music, one unit. So if your student takes chorus, orchestra, band, that's going to count. Okay. Um, they can also do something if they're not in, in any kind of music ensemble. They can do studio and art. That's an option. So this is a little bit different than what just the state says. We have a computer requirement, so they have to earn a half a credit um, taking computers here. And then we also have a health requirement, which is another half a credit. And then each year, every student has to take physical education, and that will count as a half credit, so that will accumulate to four credits when all is said and done when they're a senior. So to make sure that each student is, you know, being active and taking as much as they can and learning as much as they can, we want them to take at least six full credits each year. Um, that's kind of the gist of it. Again, this is just for a Regents Diploma. There are lots of other options, but we're just kind of covering that one at this point. Now, Mrs. Gavazzi is going to, this awful looking <laughs> thing up here, is going to kind of get into the other requirement that is going to happen for graduation, which are um, Regents exams requirements. And so we'll kind of go over that. And I think the next one is a little bit easier to read. So we're going to just kind of forward to that one. Absolutely. And if you want to look at any of this more closely, there is going to be, I'm going to share the presentation with all of you the same way we share the reminder about tonight. Um, and, and those links will be active in there at the end. So you can click on that for more information too. But a big difference between um, middle school and high school is that students also need to take and pass Regents exams. So just like all the courses that Mrs. Martin described, your student's going to pass those classes and get credits for them. But they also have to take several Regents exams and pass those. Um, so most of the students will take their first Regents exam in algebra or potentially um, living environment science. Some of them will take it this year. Um, some of them will likely take it next year. Um, but they will have to pass those class or those tests in addition to the classes. So you can see up here for the Regents Diploma, the regular Regents Diploma, students need to pass an English, Math, Science, and Social Studies exam. They do need to pass another exam. Most of our students um, get that exam by passing another Social Studies exam, um, but there are some other pathways to that. Those are listed up there. Um, next year, for the first time, we are going to have an arts pathway that students um, can take some extra art or music classes in and get, and get a sequence in that, and then um, create a portfolio for that. So we'll have a little bit more about that later, but your students probably have heard quite a bit about that if they've taken art. Um, if they're switching to art starting in two weeks, they'll hear a little bit more about that then. Um, and then we also will have a few different special endorsements for mastery. If your student does very well in an area, these aren't necessarily things that we really plan for, but we look and see how they do um, on their exams and whether they earn those or not. All right, so most of what we talked about now was getting a Regents Diploma. Um, students who really do well in school, especially in the math and science area, may try to work for their advanced Regents Diploma. So there's a couple different pieces of this. 
um, they will have to get potentially two more years of Spanish or French um, to get that advanced regents diploma. However, some students have a really high interest area in another um, area, so they're not as interested in you know, pursuing that language, but they really love art, music, or career in tech. And so they're able to get their advanced regents by getting a five unit sequence in one of those areas. Now that is five courses in four years. So if, if a student is going that direction, we really want to make sure they enjoy it and it's something they're passionate about because they're going to take a lot of it. Um, so our students that end up going that route love those things and it makes sense for them and it gives them some really great opportunities to take those um, subjects a little bit deeper. Um, and then there's some other pathways where they will get some more, um, they'll pass some more Regents exams and take some more classes. Most of those classes are mostly in science or math traditionally, um, and again, they'll have to pass those Regents exams too. All right, now I told you that we had a little more information about our arts pathway, so I'm going to let Mr. Romans talk just a little bit about that. Test, test. Oh, yes. All right, so you heard Mrs. Gavazzi talk about pathways. Essentially, like she said, you can take a pathway to replace one of the social studies exams. Keep in mind that in high school, you do have to take two years of global studies, one year of US history, and both of those courses do end in Regents exams. So even though you might take a pathway towards graduation, you're essentially on pace to challenge those Regents exams anyways. The Arts Assessment Pathway is a way that if you, let's say, fail one of those exams, you can still graduate by completing the in, ah, Individual Arts Assessment Pathway. To do this, you have to take three credits in art, do the portfolio, uh, you'll meet with your teacher quite often as a check-in. Uh, you do have to commit to this. I think we're trying to get people to commit in ninth or 10th grade. We're really only recommending this if you are beyond interested in art. Um, it's really only going to be useful for you if you really do enjoy art. So just keep that in mind. I know it seems like a nice alternative and route and, you know, if you should fail a Regents exam, it's great to have it. Um, but it really is for people who are interested. If you are, just make sure that you let Mrs. Gavazzi know when you are creating your uh, course selection for high school. And then when Mrs. Davis and I meet with you every year, we'll make sure that you are on that pathway um, to get that approved towards graduation, if that makes sense. Don't worry, graduation requirements are confusing even for us sometimes. That's exactly what I was going to say. So we just gave you a whole lot of information. But the point of tonight's meeting is to give you a little bit of that information and an overview, but also get you and your student to kind of start looking towards the future and thinking about the kind of things, not just what classes you're going to take or what the requirements are, but some of those bigger choices they have along the way and some things to kind of think about are um, when you're talking to your student, what are your strengths and weaknesses? So what are classes and things that you're really good at? What are some things you struggle in? Because as we're choosing classes and we're planning for year to year, we can make sure you're in classes where maybe you get a little extra support in some of those areas, or maybe you take an advanced class where you want to. Um, what are your priorities? You know, high school is such a great time to do all kinds of things. So take challenging classes. Um, make new friends, be part of different organizations in different um, athletic events in sports teams um, in different organizations. So kind of just finding where your priorities are and then trying to meet those. Um, so sometimes I have um, eighth graders in my room and they're looking at courses and they're talking about high school and they want to do it all. And it is amazing if you want to try to do a lot of things, but you want to find that healthy balance. Okay, if you love singing and playing an instrument, we want to make sure that you're doing some of that. You can be in the musical, you can continue to participate in band and orchestra. Um, and we want to have you take some challenging classes, but sometimes you kind of have to find that balance. And it's okay, even if you're a great student, if you don't take advanced English 9 in ninth grade, that'll be okay. If you're going to do all these other things that take up a lot of time for you and you're going to do really well in. So we want to find that balance and look at your priorities when we do that. And so then when we're kind of stepping back 
and looking at what does the future look like for you? Do you see yourself attending a four-year college? Maybe you see yourself at a community college. Um, have you considered um, some of the career and tech programs that they have over in BOCES? Um, if you look in that um, course selection booklet that you have, all of our CTE classes that they offer over in BOCES in 11th and 12th grade are listed in there. And they even change a little from year to year and some new programs have been developed over the years. Um, but that's a great way to walk out of high school knowing a trade, really having a career path in mind or having some really great skills. Um, so maybe that's something you want to consider. Um, what information have you gathered in middle school? What do you know about yourself? What seems really interesting to you? You know, we, you take a lot of classes. You do a lot of different activities. What did you really like? What do you want to do more of? What have you had enough of and you want to focus on other areas? Um, and then our high school has a ton of opportunities for students to get college credits. You know, so they can take classes for JCC, um, they can take AP classes, so AP stands for Advanced Placement, and that's where you take a college level class here in our high school, and then you take a test at the end. If you score high enough, you could potentially get college credit for that. Um, we have JCC, Jamestown Community College classes taught right here in our school. You can get college credit for that. Um, and you've also probably heard of 313, even if you don't know what it is. Um, but that's a, a program that you can participate in in the end of high school where you can take classes both here at our high school and over at SUNY Fredonia. Um, so if those things sound interesting to you, it's good to talk about now. We're not going to totally make those decisions sitting in my office as an eighth grader, but it's good to think about that and think about what your decisions now lead to after this. So here's the course selection sheet that you all have in front of you. Um, and when we come in to your eighth graders classes in the next couple weeks here, we're gonna sit down with them and we're gonna have a copy of this and we're actually gonna fill out a first draft of this, okay? And we're gonna go through each subject with the kids. Um, we're gonna have some information from their teachers about where they think they should be and then we'll ask them. Um, after they fill that out, they're gonna bring that home to you, they're gonna talk about it, and then they're gonna come back in and meet with me and we're gonna make a little bit more of a final choice on what that looks like. I'm gonna put it in the computer and we're gonna make some schedules for them. Um, but we have a lot of options on this sheet. Um, what's important to remember is it is sometimes hard to fit in all the classes you wanna take in your freshman year, okay? So we're gonna to wanna to pick six classes, but if you wanna take a seventh, it can be very hard to fit in. So you'll hear me say, well, can we take that later on? What should we take first? What's the most interesting and important to you to take first? Um, so we'll work through that and you know, we'll have a lot of conversation with home about that um, and then your students' priorities too. So if we kind of look through each subject, English, you see two listed up there, English 9, and then Advanced English 9. So that'll be some of your students' first opportunity to take an advanced course. Um, and maybe that makes sense for them if they love to read, they love to write, they're excited about literature, and they really want to apply themselves. Advanced might be great for them. Or if they just have a lot of other work and they just want to do regular 9, even if they're a great student, that's fine too. If ELA has always been a struggle for your student and they need some extra support in reading and writing, we do offer an AIS section or possibly two AIS sections of English where students can get a little extra help. They start more of their work in class. They get a little bit more help with their writing, a little bit more structure. Things move at just a tiny bit of a slower pace, uh, but they still get that English credit they need. Um, and we have those AIS classes offered in most areas. And a lot of students, they just have one area they need a little extra help and they don't necessarily need extra help in all of them. So we'll talk about them in particular and where they see their strengths and weaknesses as we walk through this. Um, and then you'll see social studies is very similar. Most students will take global history, but this will be the first time that students will have the opportunity to take an AP class. Um, so that's that college level class taught in our high school and that is in our ninth grade level social studies class and so some of them will give that a try in their freshman year. Um, and then we have a couple of social studies electives up there um, and sometimes we can fit those in a freshman schedule. We had a few I think fit them in this year um, but other times it is a little bit hard and they will take them later on if they're interested in them. Um, sometimes they're at, nice to do even in your junior or senior year um, if you want one more or, or in your sophomore year. Um, and then we move on to math. 
this is probably the most complicated one to pick, so I'll talk about this a little bit more than the other ones. Um, but if your student is already taking algebra this year and they're doing great, they're going to go on to geometry next year. They'll take their algebra regions at the end of the year and then move on. Um, our, the rest of our students are going to take algebra in some form, but we have several forms of algebra in our high school. So we have algebra A1, which will take algebra and stretch it out over two years. So that's for our students who really feel like they struggle in math and they really want to have those basics moving on through high school. Um, and then they'll take Algebra A1 and A2. They'll get two credits in math and move on from there. Um, for our students who do struggle in math at some times in the middle school, they do very well in A1 and A2 and feel, feel very confident moving forward. Um, and then if you know they're feeling okay in math, um, they'll stay in a similar situation like they are this year in math. So they'll go to Algebra E, which is 80 minutes one day and 40 minutes the next. So very similar to the structure they have this year. Um, but that extra 40 minutes, like this year, gives them just a little bit more time um, to go a little bit slower through some of those tough topics. Other students who feel pretty confident in math um, and are doing well will go into Algebra R. And then we do have a block schedule at the high school. Um, so we will talk a little bit more about what that looks like for your kids um, when we push into the classes. But, so they'll just have math every other day for 80 minutes if they want to go into that Algebra R. And then moving on to science, if they're in living environment this year, they'll go into physical setting or science next year. Um, if they're in science eight, they'll go on into living environment or biology. If science is something they really struggle in, um, we have had an AIS science, bioscience. It's a possibility for some of our students as well. Um, and then we look towards world language. So if this year is your first year of Spanish and you didn't take it as a seventh grader, you'll go on to Spanish one next year. You'll get that one <laughs> high school credit that you need to graduate with your Regents Diploma after that. If this is your second year of Spanish or French, you'll move on to Spanish or French too. As long as you pass that exam at the end of the year and get the credit you need, you'll get one credit this year and then you can move on um, and get another one next year. Now, if you want to be done with that and focus on some other areas and get your Regents Diploma, you can do that too. Or if one of those five unit sequences made sense to you, then you might go take a class in that area. Um, and then we have our art studio. If that art pathway is something you want to do, you'll want to take Studio One um, starting next year. Now, you only need one art or music to graduate, so if those are not your things, I really recommend you take it in your freshman year, and then you can decide, okay, this is all I want to do and I want to be done. However, you might also decide, ooh, I really like this and I want to take a whole lot more. And so that's great to either get that out of the way or take a lot more of it. Um, and then music, we have some very similar offerings to what we have at the middle school. The Music in Our Lives class is a general music class that can get you your music or art credit, but it doesn't really lead on to another class. Um, and then we have some business and technology electives that are great options, especially if you're interested in those areas. If that's a super high interest area for you, we'll try to fit that in in your freshman year so you can get used to that. Um, and then one of the classes on here, the Drawing and Design for Production, you'll hear it called DDP. That can also count as an art credit for you as well. Um, so if you really like that tech world um, and that is what you enjoy, then it might make sense for you to take that as your art credit, depending on what other classes you're interested in. Um, and then a lot of you will take computer applications in health in your freshman year and get those requirements out of the way. Um, if not, you can either take them in your sophomore um, or junior year. Um, and then again, PE every year. Um, and we do have the personal um, fitness and nutrition up there. I don't know how many freshmen can necessarily fit it in, but sometimes. Um, so if that's a real high interest area for you, we'll talk about that as well. So when I sit down with your student, in addition to checking over the sheet we filled out, we are also going to fill out this four-year plan. Now you'll see that it says tentative up there. Okay, we're not picking classes for all the next four years, but we do talk about if you take this, what comes after. Okay, this also has a place where the teacher recommendations for how they think 
our eighth grade teachers think your student, what classes they think they should take on there too. So when you get this home, you can see what they recommended, and if you have questions with that, um, you can ask. And both, both sheets have a place for comments, and it'll come home in a duplicate form, so you can always send your student back with a little comment or question to me, or email me, or call me, and we can talk about those things together. Um, so we will fill this out. Again, it's not set in stone, but it's a planning tool that helps us decide what's next. So what is P-TECH? P-TECH stands for Pathways in Technology, Early College High School. Um, it is a program that's located right down the street in Dunkirk. And it's a program that really kind of, if your student has a, a big interest in science, technology, um, manufacturing, that's something they're going to want to think about. So unlike when Mrs. Gavazzi talked about your student thinking about a pathway other than the traditional pathway, this is sort of a, a different story. So the students start right then in ninth grade. So they sort of have to make that decision sooner rather than later. And it's a big decision because the student doesn't come here for school. They actually go to the campus in Dunkirk and they spend their entire day there. Um, and it's a different kind of learning environment. It's very hands-on. Um, they do things in the community. They work with some of the manufacturing businesses in the community. They go there. They shadow. Um, they do some internships. And the coursework is really centered around that. They do also earn a Regents Diploma. It usually takes um, four to six years. Depends. They're really fast. They can get it done in four, but most do take six. So they'll end up with that Regents Diploma, and they'll also end up with an associate's degree from JCC. So again, if your student has any interest in that, I would recommend they really quickly talk to Mrs. Gavazzi and let her know. We do have a ton of information. Um, if you go on the website, you can even see videos. They show some of the videos, some of the manufacturing um, businesses that they visit and that they work with. So there's a lot more information out there. On the shelf out there, I think it was on the lower shelf, there were some of the handouts. Um, I think it looked something like this. Um, on the back of the one, there is a QR code. You can scan that, and it'll bring you right to the website for more information. So if you're wondering, will my student be a good fit for this program, <laughs> you might want to kind of have them look through some of these questions and see if it's a good fit. So that they have that real interest in um, real world application, applications for math and science. Are they respectful? Can they communicate with others? Because again, they're going to be working right inside those businesses, going and visiting with them, um, working with students from a whole bunch of other districts. Um, do, they, do they have the ability to problem solve and research? Do they, does the idea of a non-traditional class room seem appealing, so not sitting there looking at a book. It is hands-on. They're working with machinery, um, all kinds of different things. So it is a hands-on approach, project-based learning. And the college portion of it too. So don't forget they will end up with that associate's degree from JCC. So that's also something to consider. So just to kind of wrap that up, if you do, again, have any interest in this or any more questions, definitely contact Mrs. Gavazzi right away because it is something that they kind of need to make a decision on because they're going to start it right in, in ninth grade. So they do offer three programs. Um, the three programs, I think, are on the last slide, but it's welding, and then they have mechanical technology, that's working with CAD, and then they also have a new one, which is mechanotronics, which has to do with, I think, robotics, um, hydraulics, things like that. So that's a new program. All right, I think Mr. Romans is up to talk about some high school activities. Yeah, so Mrs. Davis and I are going to do these last two slides. We just wanted to kind of showcase all the different things that you can get involved in or with when you come up to high school. And we really want to encourage you to take advantage of these opportunities and put yourself out there and, and join a club or two. Uh, but also just be very mindful of, you know, what classes am I taking freshman year? Am I taking an AP for the first time or an advanced course? And am I also doing a sport or do I have some sort of outside of school commitment? 
and then can I take on another commitment like a club? I think what you'll find uh, with these clubs at the high school is they all have varying levels of commitment and what's nice too is that for a lot of them you don't have to go to every meeting so it's kind of a nice way to uh, dip your toes in the pool per se and just kind of experience a bunch of different things that we have to offer. When you come up to high school these will be advertised like crazy and you can show up you'll meet a lot of people who enjoy the same things that you like you'll make some new friends maybe even in different grades which will be really cool uh, so we just wanted to showcase that stuff. And then Mrs. Davis is going to give you a brief overview. Hi everyone, this is a, um, an outline of just kind of like a timeline of things to be thinking about and prioritizing throughout high school. Um, we, Mr. Romans and I will meet with our students at minimum once a year and we kind of check in on a lot of this. We talk about um, your courses, your graduation plan, how many credits you have. So we always have time with you guys um, and obviously a big part of our job is keeping you on this timeline as it's relevant to you. Um, just a couple things especially to focus on for ninth grade. One of the first things up there is about an activities resume. Um, that's something that we encourage that every student do and keep track of regardless of your plans after high school. It's really helpful for students that go to college because all of that information um, needs to be typically entered into a college application, but it's also helpful to build just a resume that you can use in the world of work or elsewhere if you're not a college um, bound student. Um, basically an activities resume is just like a list of activities you're involved in in high school, maybe some um, honors or challenging classes that you've taken, um, hobbies, part-time jobs, internships, anything like that, awards. Um, and when you keep, when you start keeping track in ninth grade, it's just a lot easier to remember and, and maintain than trying to remember in the fall of your senior year what happened for the last three years. Um, so that's something I want to highlight. Um, of course, um, we will meet with students every year. Um, this has been said a couple times, but you know we definitely encourage students to take a challenging course load, but a balanced challenge, challenging course load. Um, prioritize what's important to you. That you know, coming into ninth grade is a big transition. Um, high school is more rigorous and difficult. There's um, there's a challenge or there's a transition just academically. So it's really important to keep in mind. Um, what you can take on or what you feel like you can take on and still be successful. Um, and then, you know, the other things are kind of, um, on this list are kind of for post high school planning, which again, we will um, work with you guys each year and kind of highlight what is important each year. Um, of course, a lot of times the students who are planning to go to college, there's a little bit more forward planning with that. We need to start a little bit earlier. Um, you know, applications really happen in fall of senior year, um, but there's still a lot of really relevant career planning, um, you know, planning for, you know, any military uh, or employment um, plans for after high school. So I think that about does it. Does anyone have any questions about this or I don't, maybe, I think questions is the next. Yeah. Does anyone have any questions, or did you want to wrap up anything? Yeah, no, we can go ahead. If anyone has questions, they need, or they want the whole group to come um, here. If not, we will be around for a little while after. But if you have any questions, go ahead, raise your hand, and I can help you out.